Welcome Calculus 3 students. We're discussing Lagrangian multipliers today. We're going to be finding the maximum and minimum values of an objective function with some given constraints. We need to make sure that our uh, objective function and constraint function are differentiable on this uh, real space in two dimensions and our gradient for our constraint function can't be equal to zero. In order to do this there's a procedure and basically you're just going to find the gradient of f and set it equal to um, the gradient of g which is your constraint function times lambda find these uh, points where the maximums and minimums occur and then you're going to actually compute those values so let's just go ahead and do one and see what this looks like we have a an objective function that is on this particular um, like an ellipsoid shape here and I will go ahead and find the gradient of f which is then going to be a vector which is uh, 4x and 2y. I will then find the gradient of g which is then going to be another vector and that would be 2x and 8y. Now I'm going to take my uh, x component which is 4x and set it equal to lambda times my g component which is 2x and uh, likewise I'll do this for the others. Now I have three equations and I need to solve for x and y with this Lagrangian multiplier lambda in there so I'm going to set that up. All right, I have solved my equation for uh, x and lambda now I'll be uh, plugging this in, see if I can get some different values, such as when x equals 0 and lambda equals 2, what will I get over here for my, uh, oh, I was supposed to write g of x, y equals 0. So my uh, constraint function and it equaling 0, so I'll plug that in. I will get that if x is 0, then 4y squared minus 4 equals 0 and y must equal positive negative 1. So possible value for max and min would be this one or this one. Likewise over here plugging in to my constraint function I will get that x squared minus 4 equals 0 therefore x must equal either a positive or negative 2. So I have possibilities of 2, oops, 2 comma 0 or negative 2 comma 0. Plugging that into my original function I get that f of 0, 1. If you plug that into your original here you'll get that f equals 3. Likewise is same for this one. 0, negative 1 it equals 3 and I'll do the rest for the other. In summary, what I have is I have a max value with these for this particular objective function with the given constraints. I would get a maximum value of 10 at the points 2, 0 and negative 2, 0, and I would get a minimum value of 3 at the points 0, 1 and 0, negative 1. So using these Lagrangian multipliers, I am able to find maximum and minimum values of objective functions with given constraints. In example two we extend what we are doing to three dimensions. Um, we're going to find the least distance, so I'm going to use the distance formula and I'm also going to pull that little trick where I say that um, I'm looking for distance so I'll just go ahead and square my function and note that at that square of that's also going to happen at that same distance there therefore I can get rid of that square root symbol so let me go ahead and write all this down. So there we have um, our function that we're going to use because if that distance is a minimum then the square of all those different distances if I choose the minimum distance that square is also going to be a minimum so it, it follows that I can uh, kind of bypass it using this. So there's my objective function here is my constraint function because the point has to be on that curve. So let me write this in terms of x, y, z and that would be uh, 
z squared minus x squared minus y squared. Now what I'm going to do is find those gradients of um, the f and the g for each of my components. So let's look at the gradient of f and then write that down. I'll take the derivative here and that would be 2 times the x minus 3. Derivative of x is just x and I'm going to go ahead and write all of these down. Alright, I found my gradient for both my objective and my constraint function. Next I have my um, four equations that I'm going to need to solve for x, y, and z. So I'll go ahead and equate these and try to find my points. Alright, here they are each all written out. Now I'm just going to move everything over to one side and put my numbers on the other and look to see how uh, both the x and the y and the lambda and the z all uh, relate. I'm going to look at my easiest case first. So if I look at this guy, I see that I have the scenario where z could equal zero. If z equals zero, then that must mean, if I plug in a zero here, that must mean that both my x and y must be equal to zero. But that can't be the case because if x and y are zero, then uh, these equations over here would be false. So that is not the case. My other scenario is that lambda must be equal to 1 and z cannot be equal to 0. So let's plug that in because that is the only case that could exist here. And if lambda is 1, that means that x is 3 halves and y is 2. So we now have the possibility of the point 3 halves 2 and then whatever z is 3 halves 2 and whatever z is and if you'll plug it into plug those values into here and calculate your z what you'll get is z can either be a 5 halves or a negative 5 halves. Next thing you'll need to do is plug it into your distance equation not the f equation that we had uh, originally messed with. We actually now want the exact value of distance and our distance when you plug that in you'll get um, square root of 25 over 2 and this is of course 5 over the square root of 2 and this one will be the same thing because you're squaring those numbers so oops I didn't mean to write all of this but Alright, and this means that you have your minimum distance at either of these two points. That's where those minimum distances occur on that cone. We're going to be doing the same thing for our last example. We are using our utility function. Here it is, and here's my constraint function. So first up, I'm going to need the gradient of my objective function, so the gradient of f is going to be, take the derivative of this with respect to l, b one third l to the minus two thirds g to the two thirds, and then two thirds l to the one third g to the minus one third. Now I'll take the gradient with respect to, with, for g, and that will get me, this one's much easier, a 3 and a 2. So I will solve this for my three equations, which I'll write down and plug in. All right, here's my three equations. So I'll take the x component, 1 third L to the minus 2 thirds G to the 2 thirds, set that equal to lambda. And the x component of my gradient is a 3, and likewise for the other. In solving these two equations for L and G, you'll get that G equals 3L. 
and plugging those in to my constraint function equal to zero, you'll get that L equals four thirds and G would equal four. You'll need to plug that into your utility function. So U would be equal to, and plugging that in, uh, the four thirds, so that would be four thirds to the one third, and then four to the two thirds. You'll end up with four over the cubed root of two, which is then about 2.8 would be your maximum value for this utility function subject to this constraint equation. And that's it for this section.